Yo, yo, we live and we back, man. Y'all already know. Welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose. Here today, bring you another edition of the Starting Five for DraftKings and Fan Duel. All right. But before we get into it, y'all already know. Got the lineup review. Got my best lineup pulled over yesterday's updated starting five, all right? Yesterday was an okay slate, uh, a little double up for us. My best lineup put up 313 This was in the $5 single entry. I only played like 10 15 bucks last night. As I told y'all, man, continue. I'm going to continue to go light. I'm going to continue to tell y'all to go light because you just seen today, like <clears throat> on tonight's slate, man, it's going to be a lot of crazy news. It's going to be a lot of guys. Probably starting out the blue out of nowhere. Guys who's playing, who's not going to get full run, man. I'm telling you, go extremely light. The next couple of days are going to be crazy. Just go light and wait till the playoffs kick in so we can really get to it when the playoffs start, all right? That being said, if you caught my updated starting five yesterday, you knew I went with TJ McConnell, Terrence Davis, uh, Aaron Gordon, Demonte Sabonis, and uh, Metu from the Sacramento Kings. All right. Like I said, yesterday was a pretty solid night. Uh, double up. Came in 66th place in the $5 single entry. Uh, going into the slate, I mean, I thought that uh, Pacers value, those Pacers players were too good to pass up. I knew I knew they was going to be chalky, but there was nothing you can really do yesterday. One of the uh, few teams who really needed to win, uh, who's still jostling for playoff position and trying to stay in the play-in tournament. Uh, it was the highest total on the slate. And then once Levert was ruled out, I, I knew it was just going to be some bonus. I wanted to get some T.J. McConnell. I wanted to take some stats at Holiday. It's going to be so much usage freed up and so much shots to go around with Levert being up out of there. So I, I went two paces. I could have went uh, another two as all pretty much all the paces went off yesterday. But we went with T.J. McConnell at the top, 5,500. Got to start at point guard with no Levert. 66% on over here. We knew he'd be high on, but... Yeah, we felt like you had to have him, and uh, he gave you a monster performance, 44 DK points, very solid effort from TJ McConnell. Coming in at my shooting goal, I wanted to go Terrence Davis. Just a spot trying to get a little different as there was so much value, especially in the guard positions. I knew a lot, not a lot of people would be going to Terrence Davis. Uh, you know, it, it was so much uh, value here. You had guys like Jalen Harris, other pay down options at, at, at point guard and shooting guard. But I went Terrence Davis, got him right at 19%. He gave us a solid performance right at 38 DK points. Very solid. Just over 6X right here for Terrence Davis. You know, that's what we always look for over here. At least 6X or better. That's what we try to look at from our players so very solid out of terrence davis at my small forward i went with aaron gordon just another spot trying to get different from some of the value i, I didn't want to have uh i didn't really want to go stars and scrubs as i didn't feel comfortable with a lot of the stars playing time but i probably should have and went uh uh, Pacers and ran it back with Giannis was the ideal matchup. 250 ended up taking down the whole thing. I think they had a similar bill, like three Pacers and ran it back with Giannis. So that kind of Stars and Scrubs was kind of the way to go, but hindsight is always 20-20. We didn't see that coming into the slate. I just wanted to lock down the Pacers guys and kind of go uh, even across the board. But we got Aaron Gordon at 5,100, right at 19% on. Just gave us uh, 27 DK points, a little over 5X from Aaron Gordon. We Wanted to go here. Thought he would be in line for uh, as we he saw uh, he been seeing double digit shot attempts the last couple of games as we as we thought they were trying to get him some offensive looks if you saw from the video yesterday and I thought Michael Porter Jr. being out bode well for him or gave him a slight boost. Hopefully he could see a few more shots, but uh, all in all he was just okay. He gave us like I said a little over five x. We'll take it. And my power forward, the spot that really hurt hurt a lot of people, that, that's a bonus injury. And Sabonis was on his way to a monster. He came in at right at 58% on. He gave you 41 DK points in like 24 minutes. I think he only played 24, 25 minutes before his injury. So if he get his other 10 to 12 minutes that he normally get, he would have crushed yesterday and been right up there with Giannis. So 
Uh, very solid from Sabonis. We knew he would be chalky, but you just had to go there with no Levert, no Levert, no Brog, no none of them guys. You knew he was going to do everything for the uh, for the Pacers here. So we just locked Sabonis in, and so did a lot of other people. But he still did okay despite limited run and the injury. But if if he if he doesn't get hurt, man, we can place a little higher in here. It, it would have helped me out. I had a lot of Sabonis last night, all right? And then finishing out the starting five. I wanted to go Metu from the Sacramento Kings. Felt like he would be in line for the start again. Probably see 30 minutes with no Barnes and no Bagley over here. 4100 thought that was a very fair price for him. Got him right at 56% on ownership in this contest. He gave us a 29 DK points. So over 6 S for Metu. Very solid. All right, finishing out the lineup. I went with Alex Burks here. Just trying to get a different piece of uh, the... As I knew guys were paying down, like I said, to to guys like uh, Harris and other cheap guys. And once we saw that uh, Rose was out and Burks was playing, I, I won't just roll the dice here. As I, as I thought, he, he should at least see 20, 25 minutes. And uh, Burks said 20, 25 minutes. Is, this is 3,200 is far too cheap for him. As he, you know, he's a guy that looks to score coming in off the bench whenever he enters the game. He, he's their bench scoring punch. So I just felt like if he was if he was playing, he should be in line for 20, 25 minutes. And I thought he could really return value. You know, I didn't anticipate him going this crazy, but right at 4% ownership, beautiful ownership right here to get away from some of those other pay down options like the Toronto Raptors guys. And I'm saying just a little pivot. To get different, man, he gave us 50 DK points. Monster, monster performance right here from Alex Burks. Hands down the best value play on the slate yesterday. We were lucky we got him in here. We took that chance on it. Really pushed us up the leaderboard. Then coming in at my center spot, I wanted to look at Julius Randle. It's Randle, man. No no rolls. We figured he would see a little bump in usage. That's also why we went to Alex Burks with no uh, Derrick Rose out there. Feel to be a few more shots to go around as Derrick Rose has been playing very solid off the bench, uh, playing 30 plus minutes. But with no Rose, we expected to see a boost for Randall and a boost for Burks if he got the playing time. And we was uh, we, we was okay on Randall. Randall got it right at 26% ownership. He just solid out here. Gave us 51 DK points. Uh, needed something bigger from him, but we'll definitely take that from Julius Randall. And then my last roster spot. Just wanted to lock in a guy who. I was secure with his minutes, and hopefully he, he can hit a ceiling-type performance. Wanted to go Malachi Flynn here, as we knew the ownership would be down on him a little bit too, especially since that McConnell news had uh, that McConnell was starting had broke. I knew it would drive him down. I'm hoping we can just still get a solid play that didn't change. People was on him heavy all day, and just because McConnell became a good play doesn't mean he stopped being a good player. That's a lot of times that's what you got to watch in DFS. All right, a, a new value open up and everybody runs there. Even though he, even though the new value in McConnell is a good play, everybody knows it. There's no reason to go away from Flynn, who was still a very solid play. Nothing that changed for him. It just McConnell was the new shiny toy, so everybody ran over there. We just wanted to lock my Flynn in right here. Got him at 21% ownership, uh, giving us right at 34 DK points. A solid effort right there for uh, Malachi Flynn, right at 6x for him. So just a solid night last night, man. But let's get on to tomorrow as we closing out the week getting ready for playoff basketball all right coming into tomorrow slate same thing applies man keep it light don't go too crazy it's gonna be it's gonna every day gonna get harder and harder because you you don't know who's playing who's who and the, out of the people who are playing you don't know how hard they're gonna go like the starters may play they might see 25 minutes you just never know keep it light guys and just uh Take, feel free to take some chances on some guys. Like it, it, it might be the next couple of days of the NBA, you probably can leave salary on the table. Don't worry about spending your whole fifty thousand. As the best lineups probably may have. 1500 2000 left on the table. You just got to see how it goes and pay attention to the news. But at the point guard spot, guy I want to take a look at is uh, Nicole Alexander-Walker for the Pelicans going against the Golden State Warriors here. Uh, expecting Alonzo Ball to still be out. We saw Alexander-Walker get the start last time and play 35 minutes. That was enough for me. I see no reason why he shouldn't be in line for that same type role here today uh, going against the Warriors with no Lonzo again. He should be a slated 
needed to start, and I'm expecting him to approach 30 minutes, and he's a guy who can really get it going and fill it up, as you know the type of performances he had early in the year, so I definitely want to take a chance at him right here on this 6400, going against the Golden State Warriors, hoping his ownership is down a little bit, especially since he didn't perform very well the last start he got, so hoping the ownership is suppressed a little bit, but I have no problem going back to Alexander Walker. Coming in as shooting guard. You saw him get the start tonight. I'm anticipating him getting it again tomorrow. Want to look right back to Jalen Harris for the Toronto Raptors. At 4,100, going against the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, you know Toronto, man. They've been shut it down for the year. So, they're just giving these uh, younger guys some looks, letting them uh, play right here. With, uh, as you saw, Gary Trent Jr. didn't start uh, last night. So, <clears throat> they probably do that again tonight. Gary, Tr Gary Trent Jr. might not even play tomorrow. So, I'm just trying to get in the guys – Trying to get the guys I'm expecting to get the minutes. And Jalen Harris is one of those guys in his matchup against the Mavericks. Coming in at small four. I think we can go right back to Terrence Davis right here. Uh, price came up a little bit more, 6,200. But I still think there's some value left on the bone over there. As he should be in line for 30-plus minutes again. As you know, uh, the, the Sacramento Kings are pretty much done for the year two. I don't know the quite the scenario. Maybe if they win one and somebody lose, they can get in. But, I mean, they should be playing a regular rotation. And Terrence Davis has been seeing 30, uh, right at 30 minutes regardless of uh, what has been going on. So even if so, even if Sacramento is done and they want to rest the starter, since Dar Davis comes off the bench, he should be in line for his 30 minutes. And that's what we want to try to lock in tomorrow, try to get secure minutes and guys who has a chance at solid production. And that's what we get with Terrence Davis in this matchup at the, against the Memphis Grizzlies. Coming in at power four, I want to look at Kenyon Martin Jr. going against the uh, Los Angeles Clippers here. His price tag is up at 7000 but he just one of those guys, again, out for Houston. I'm expecting to get a lot of run. We saw Ole Nick play last time out, but only played like 26, 27 minutes. I don't see why he he, probably, he he might play less than that. He might not even start this game as Houston's done for the year two. And they'll tell him they probably shut it all the way down. So I want to look to Kenyon Martin Jr. right here as he should be one of those guys over there that should be locked in to 30-plus minutes, all right? Definitely want to take his chance on him, even though he's 7 k it's just a chance at production, especially with Old Nick not getting the full run. I think we can get to Kenya Martin Jr. tomorrow. And coming in at my center spot, I want to look at Damian Jones, all right? We saw him get to start the second half as Rashawn Holmes left the game with injury. Got to definitely pay attention to that news, but I wouldn't expect them to run uh, Holmes out there tonight, especially if he couldn't finish the game yesterday. So we could see Damian Jones getting to start again. Should approach should approach 30 plus minutes and you know any center any big man that's gonna get 30 plus minutes should fall into some rebounds maybe some easy putbacks he can really pay off his third 300 tomorrow all right so there you have it man my starting five right now for DraftKings: nicole alexander walker jalen harris terrence davis kenya martin jr and damian jones all right let's go take a look at FanDuel and see what i'm liking and if you still here man you haven't hit the subscribe button what you waiting on please hit that thumbs up button man leave a comment down below let me know that you like the video or what you want to see more of or see less of just uh talk to me baby you know what i mean all right now Coming in on FanDuel at the top. I want to look at Daly on right. Yep, yep. 8,300. Going against the Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow. Uh, you saw him start tonight. Play 38 minutes. They're going to probably let him finish it up strong tomorrow. Uh, I should say he should start again. If he starts again, I'm expecting him to see 30-plus minutes, as most of the guys are already heard over there. It's a few backup point guards they might look at Guy or something like that. But just making sure, if, as long as he starts tomorrow, I think he should be in line for 30-plus minutes. I think you can take a look at Daly on right. Coming in at shooting guard, staying with Nikhil Alexander Walker, 6,200. Just expecting him to get his full run, expecting ownership to be down since he disappointed last time out. I'm going to like getting to him in his matchup against the Golden State Warriors. Coming in at small forward over here. Want to take a look at Sadiq Bay, 5,900. Going against the Denver Nuggets. The, you know, the Pistons been shut there down as well. All those guys out for, for the Detroit Pistons. Sadiq Bay has been the one constant for them this year. Should see 35 minutes. And, you know, he, he has a chance to hit uh, have a big performance. And he's giving you a few big performances this year. But really just paying for the minutes and the stability right here with Sadiq Bay for this 5,900. 
coming in at power four. I want to stay in that same Denver Nuggets Detroit game. I want to look at Tyler Cook as he should be in line for some playing time tomorrow. We know it should be no plumbing, no Isaiah Stewart. He's out for a personal matter. So the the bigs basically fall down between Cook and Okafor. It's the only two centers they had, true centers they have on the roster tomorrow. So you just want to pay attention to who's starting. But regardless of who's starting, I think Tyler Cook should be in line for decent run tomorrow. We want to take advantage of him at this third. 500 price tag and then rounding out that center staying with the boy damian jones for the sacramento kings just really anticipating Holmes being out him getting a start he can really pay all this price tag going against the memphis grizzlies get you some damian jones all right there you have it man my starting five for fan duel daily on right nico alexander walker sadiq bay tyler cook and damian jones get you some exposure to these guys get them in your player pool y'all know y'all know i'm gonna have them in mind that's gonna do it for us here today y'all know the motto chances make champions y'all green up man i see y'all tomorrow all right let's go